Hi guys, this is Anthony uh, Terrell on YouTube. I'm going to make an entry into the Doug 100 story lock picking. Um, so first of all, congratulations to Doug for 100 subscribers. Uh, though I know at this point he's actually uh, getting quite past that. So congratulations on both counts. Um, so this is actually like the third or fourth filming of this video, uh, which is bad news for me, but good news for I guess anyone who cares is I actually solved that vexing audio problem uh, on the uh, first video and uh, so yeah uh, I'm embarrassed to say it was actually a piece of plastic uh, which is crumpled up now but imagine this smooth and it was covering the back of my iPhone it had been there since the very beginning and I never noticed it uh, because I had a case over it and uh, so anyway uh, through, it's crumpled up because once I figured it out I was annoyed and Anyway, I crumpled it and threw it away, and if I had thought it through, I actually would have made a video for other people who experienced the problem, because the plastic was covering one of the microphones. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, so, all right, so Doug's story, oh, I'm going to pick this lock, I, I may or may not be successful, I, my earlier iterations of this video had me trying to pick a uh, Schlage, um, similar handset Schlage, uh, and failed, so I went a step down, uh, or easier. Uh, maybe I'll actually get this. This is just uh, so you have something to watch while I'm talking. So uh, how I came to Lockport or how I found out about Lockport. Um, so it goes back to probably about 2004 or 2005. Uh, and uh, a real estate mentor of mine, a friend, mentor, uh, he had just acquired a house through foreclosure. Uh, and uh, he basically, you know, I was with him to go check out the property the first time we had gone through, and uh, he picked the lock, and I said, that's, uh, that's awesome. That's, like, the coolest thing I've ever seen. So, um, yeah, so that kind of piqued my interest, and I was like, wait, it's possible to do that? Um, and I got a, a very introductory kit. Um, like It's, like, a basic... Southward kit uh, came with the easy pickings booklet, which I think I had seen on Dalp's workbench at one point or someone's workbench, and uh, they probably still sell it. It's uh, I think it might be like PXS five or something like that. But uh, yeah, four, four uh, picks and one very basic wiper wrench, not unlike the one I'm using now. And um, I don't know if I ever actually used it. I may have picked one lock. Um, I don't know. It kind of didn't really get used for. 10 or 15 years or so. Um, let's see. And then earlier this year, uh, I, I was involved in uh, acquiring a three family property, and the listing agent had actually left their uh, lockbox on the door. And, you know, basically after the closing, we were like, Do you want your lockbox? And there was, there was some issue where some issue involving a tenant or something. I don't know. We needed to get the lockbox off, and the guy wasn't responding. And it's like, you'd think, you know, these lockboxes cost, I don't know, 20 bucks or something, whatever they cost. And the guy wasn't responding. And uh, so I kind of wanted to get it off the door in a non destructive manner because I said, well, what if the guy, you know, comes back and said, oh, I was on vacation or whatever, I want my lockbox, and we just busted it? I mean, you know, we'd have a good argument, like, hey, you didn't respond, but I just figured it would be cleaner to get it off non destructively in case he ever comes back. And then he can say, okay, here you go. Check your email next time, um, but uh, or respond to it anyway. Uh, but whatever. So I went on YouTube trying to figure out how to uh, open this lockbox, and I, as many people say, uh, I um, found Lock Picking Lawyer and Bodney and Bill. Um, I, ultimately, I you know I to get that lockbox open, I I was successful. I didn't use a uh, Peterson uh, feeler gauge or long knife or anything like that. Uh, I used a cut up piece of can, uh, aluminum can or something, whatever they make it out of these days. Um, and I did get it open and that was cool. Uh, but then, you know, I started having seen the videos and, uh, you know, I started getting my mind uh, working. And it, uh, actually in the late 2000s, I had been involved with a rental property that I had been managing and uh, I actually had gotten a repinning kit. It had nothing to do with lock picking, but you know, so you start to put the, I started to put the pieces together in my brain. Uh, and I said, you know, this, you know, if I do real estate stuff, this lock picking thing could come in handy, especially if you deal with foreclosed houses, which I do on a semi frequent basis. So, uh, yeah, so that was kind of interesting. Um, uh, there's also been a number of occasions where I've been involved in a property and, uh, it was held short term and, um, 
you know, we, we never bothered changing the locks uh, and nothing bad happened. It was fine. Uh, but, you know, it was a small risk. And if, if I can repin a lock, then that's kind of cool um, without having to pay someone to do it. So, uh, yeah, so that, that was my introduction to lock sport and, and knowing it's a thing. Um, what turned me from uh, a, a lurker to someone who actually kind of got more into it was... Uh, I, th I think it was decoding that lockbox, um, which I think happened over the summer. And then um, I was actually involved in a foreclosed house about maybe a month or two ago. Or maybe it was August or so. Um, and I successfully, we, we, we had foreclosed on it. I had successfully uh, picked the lock. And, uh, and I was very happy with about that. But then I couldn't open the door. And I thought it was actually that there was a latch that was holding the door shut. Um, and I was, you know, I was elated that I picked it and then crestfallen that I couldn't get the darn door open. So, uh, that was fun. Uh, I was like, what the hell? Uh, I, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, it turned out that the house, which had been vacant for quite some time, uh, had had a pipe burst or something and it was a mold house and I actually ended up getting sick in it in September uh, anyway, but um, but so the funny thing is, so I picked the lock and then, uh, I actually, uh, that was a side door, uh, and I was a little nervous, you know, cause I kind of suck at this as the current video might, uh, indicate, uh, I was a little nervous. I actually ended up calling a locksmith, uh, to just open the front door and rekey the locks and, and everything. Um, and had a great conversation with him and, um, yeah, that was actually pretty cool. Um, he said, uh, you're one of my more knowledgeable customers. I said, well, thanks. Um, but yeah, so that was, uh, but you know, uh, as my mind opened to the possibilities of, you know, how this could actually be useful. Um, and of course it's interesting. It's like a, it's a mental physical puzzle. It's like those little, uh, twisted up pieces of metal that some older folks might remember, uh, little puzzles, uh, just like that, except, you know, <laughs> it's also possibly useful, uh, in a variety of situations. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's my story, um, and hopefully this will mean that uh, this will be the fourth or whatever iteration of this video. I was really hoping I could get this lock open. Uh, I've done it. It's, it rakes, of course, you know, in three seconds, um, but I was hoping I could single pin pick it. But anyway, all right, that's the story, and uh, congratulations again to Doug. Thanks.